This is the last video in the Revit to Rift series of four videos looking at using real-time animation tools for rendering and animation and immersion as well as using the Oculus Rift as a final output source for some of your work. So just to recap really quick, this is a really simple little object that we modeled in Revit just to get the ideas across. Currently where this is at is we have animation working in real time with the setting and controls and a little bit of atmospherics as well. So what we want to do next is bring in the Oculus Rift controller so that we can switch to the normal camera which is this little guy. Let's just select it and zoom in on it really quick. First person controller, F key. This little guy which is essentially the collider in the camera. We want to replace this with the Oculus Rift setup. So to do that, I'm going to go to Assets, Import Package, and Custom Package. And I'm going to navigate to where I keep the custom package for the Oculus Rift. Unity Projects, Rift Parts, Oculus Unity Integration is the file that I'm going to be open, opening. So this will take this one second to decompress. And I want to import all of those objects. And what that's going to give me in my asset browser is a new camera system to bring in. Oculus Rift VR prefabs, OVR player, and OVR camera. And I believe what we want to do, and I have to try both of these really quick, it's been a little bit of time since I've done this, is the OVR player. And let's move it up, and let's look at what we have. So, again, just like the previous camera, we have a collider, which is sort of the pill-shaped thing. The big difference that we have in this is there are actually two cameras in this particular setup and you can see I have a very wide field of view. The two cameras are going to give you left eye and right eye and that is one of the reasons why you have to have the pro version of this to be able to, to, to utilize the Oculus Rift. So I'm going to go ahead and improve our starting position just a little bit. I'm going to turn the cameras around in that direction. And now when I click play if you notice, it's still picking up that first camera that I placed. Now, if you're really good with scripting, you can write a simple little script to say, don't point to this camera, point to this camera. I am not particularly adept at scripting. What I typically do, first person controller, I know I can just drag and drop this dude in later. I'm just going to go ahead and delete it. Now when I click play, it's going to default to the Rift camera. And you can see I now have a left eye and right eye. And if you also notice, I am looking straight down at the ground. That's because my Oculus Rift headset is laying flat on the desk. As soon as I pick the headset up, it's going to start using the motion tracking to look around. So all I'm doing right now, not using the mouse at all, I'm just moving the headset around on my hands. I can't see this through the headset player yet, through the actual Oculus Rift. I'm going to set it back down. But let's look at how you can do that. So inside of Unity, I have these two tabs, my scene tab, which is how I'm viewing things, moving around. So this is my scene, and then I also have the game tab. And if I select that, that's essentially my game view. If I look at my monitor setup right now with the Oculus Rift attached, you can see that I have three monitors. I have my primary monitor right here. That's what I'm screencasting off of. That's what Unity is on. I've got my throw-off monitor that has my screencasting software and a few notes. And then I've got the Rift, the Rift development kit. So it's showing up on your computer exactly like a monitor, which is really nice in, in terms of how we can leverage it, especially if you have a nice computer. Ideally, how I would set this up um, is I would use the Rift monitor, and instead of extending, I would mirror this display. It would be a much, much nicer setup, my computer uh, and video card terrible. Not, not really a good system at all. Not conducive to using virtual reality. Um, 
still works. I, I work around it. But what I can do with this particular setup is once I'm inside of Unity, I can take this game tab and I can essentially rip it off of Unity and drag it over to my Rift headset, which was on the left. Let me do that really quick. Once I have that over on the other screen, I can expand it so that it's full screen. And then when I hit play, what I'm going to see here, let's go ahead and I'm going to switch this to wireframe so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to zoom in on this view on the OVR player, I hope. There we go. And zoom out just a little bit. Now when I click play on my off monitor, um, which has the Oculus Rift headset on it, I actually begin to get a real-time look inside of Unity, which doesn't run quite as fast as if you were standing alone, but it works really well. And what's nice is I can be in the space and I can hit stop. I can make some changes and I can quickly work through that without having to build a scene each time. So you can see that the camera is moving around um, and it is essentially that is a view of what I'm seeing through the Rift, which is a really, really nice setup to work with in Unity on. So I'm going to go ahead and stop this, and let's do one more quick look at establishing that final scene for the Oculus Rift. Switch this back to textured. So what I'm going to do is file, build, and run. And so essentially what's happening right now is we're compiling all the assets for the scene and getting everything in a nice, neat, transportable package. So this is the file that's popped up. And notice, you know, this went straight to the player. If I just went file and build settings, it would be a slightly different process. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and run this as windowed so you can see it. Uh, I'm not going to try and screencast um, the Rift settings or uh, what the Rift is seeing. Uh, this will give you a, a really good idea. I'm going to go ahead and switch this to fantastic because fantastic is an option, so why wouldn't I use it? And you can see right now, the mouse is still working. So it is going to override what you're seeing. And for some reason or another, let's see here. Let's see if we can't troubleshoot this apart. This will be a good thing for the video. Is it did not utilize the Rift camera. Let's see here. Let's see if we can't troubleshoot this really quick as part of the video. I think I know what I did wrong. I believe I actually built the wrong scene. Let's go in, and this will be a really good thing to take a look at, actually. Good mistake, good mistake. Build settings. I am working on, I just built video 3 scene unity. This is video 4 scene unity. Really easy mistake if you're not working in unity very often. I need to uncheck that, add current. Now I'm building video 4 scene unity. That'll make a huge difference. It's going to grab the assets from this scene, not from a previous scene that I was working on. That's why, you know, really I should probably always go through the build settings rather than build and run. I'm just, I don't spend quite enough hours in Unity to really feel comfortable with it. So I'm going to go ahead and run this file name VR test 2, since it is test 2, save. We will recompile all the assets. and hope that we have a better experience this time. Setting, fantastic. Now, if I'm going to play this, this is another good point to make. If I am going to play this inside of the Rift, what I typically have to do with my laptop is, again, I, I don't have an option to be able to mirror my display with both the Rift and the primary monitor. So I actually have to drag this off my screen into the Rift 
and launch it from there. It's really, really annoying. So I would not use Windows. I would want that to be full screen. Um, so I would want to uncheck that. Let's leave that windowed on. In fact, I'm going to even make it just a little bit smaller so it's easier to capture in the screencast this time and hit play. And hopefully when this pops up, we'll be looking right at the ground. Perfect. Okay, so this is really similar to what we were seeing last time inside of Unity, except since we're outside of Unity, we're going to get a little bit higher fidelity. We are going to get um, a higher frame rate. In fact, if I hit the space bar, I should be able to see what the frame rate is. It should be reasonably high. And then I can use AWSD to begin walking around. And essentially, I'm going to use the Rift wherever I'm pointing. That is where I'm going to go. Now, the mouse still works. I can use the mouse to begin overriding my direction, which is nice because, again, you're tethered in. You have wires. You can't turn around 360 degrees. But when we do have people doing um, something with the Rift, we really strongly suggest that they don't use the mouse very much, only when they need to turn around. Um, nothing is going to get you sicker faster than using the mouse to look around without turning your head. So this final file is ready to go. It's ready for an immersive experience. If you really want to heighten everything on it, what we typically suggest people do is do full coverage headphones. If it's somebody's very first experience, inside of the Oculus Rift, like if you're doing this for a client that's never done anything quite like this before, make sure you make it easy on them. Um, we've made several people sick with this, nothing terrible, but it can be really disorienting and for some people even a claustrophobic experience. But what I can tell you is those people, which is most, that really find this immersive and incredible thing, it takes about a minute to a minute and a half, and all of a sudden you really just get transported into another location. Architecturally speaking, one of the things that's absolutely incredible about this is no longer are you only showing materiality and location um, and proportion. You also generally have a sense of scale. When I move inside of something like this and I look up, I really get the sensation that those beams are just barely above my head. That is something that I could very easily reach up and touch, as opposed to going into a much larger structure where I would really have the feeling that I'm in something and that sense of being small inside of a place. That is something that, that you just cannot convey any other way that I have found other than using this brand new tool set, which I'm really, really excited about. It's I think this is going to be an amazing communication tool. I think for some people it might also become a great design tool, but it is definitely something not to ignore. This is definitely something that you need to spend some time investing in and learning this workflow and figuring out the right way to leverage it for your work. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the player and exit. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to drop me a note, dbeach01 at drury.edu, or just catch up with me through the videos uh, on the YouTube homepage.